Hello guys, this is Code with Vlad, and this is the third video about Easy Peasy. In the previous video, we have seen the actions. Actions allow you to mutate the store. Thunks, on the other side, allow you to call other actions or do something asynchronously or do something really cool, which is a communication between different stores. That part we're going to see it a bit later, but for now, let's focus on the first two properties of, of Thunks. First of all, Thunks are mostly used for asynchronous operations and they call other actions. So the action here, it mutates the state. So it does something directly with the state. A thunk will call an action. So a thunk could call, for instance, set name, which will mutate the state. So when I'm creating something with store and actions and thunks, what I like to do, at least with TypeScript, is to really structure you will see that if you structure your application well, it will save you so much time. It will allow you to, I don't know, work on the project. I don't know you guys, but when I work on a code, I like to see everything well organized. It's really a pleasure for me to work on a project like that. And it's really horrible when stuff is messy. So let's organize a bit. So we have an interface for the store model. Uh, let's write store model state. So this will only um, store the the state, so name and course. And we're gonna to create another interface store model actions, right? And interface store model thunks. So everything is well organized and clean and it's really nice. Uh, so we have just put the action in the uh, in this interface and let's create it thunk. I was thinking about um, something like update data uh, for the name. So update data. And for the thunks, I like to put thunk at the end. So when I import the action, and the thing is here, you don't have use store thunks. A thunk is kind of an action as well. So when you will import a lot of thunks and actions here, if they all have the same name, it's a bit annoying because you don't know which uh, function will be the action and which function will be the thunk. So that's why I will put thunk here. So we know that it's a thunk. It's of type thunk, so imported from easy peasy. It uh, is like an action refers to this object and it, it can accept the payload or not. And in our case, it will accept the payload and let's create an interface for that payload. So I want in one function, update the name of the guy and the course directly. So I'm going to create an interface. Um, so update data payload. That's how I'm going to call it. It will have a name, which is a string, and it will have course, which is a string. And this will be of type of this interface. And for, for now, it's okay. Okay, so now we have three interfaces and then I'm going to create one final interface and it will kind of inherit from all of them and it will be the store model and the store model will extend from, extends uh, store model state, store model actions here and store model thunks. And here we go, everything is organized, everything is well um, well organized, and the model complains because we don't have, um, well, we don't have update data thunk, let's add that, and it should be a thunk, so thunk, and uh, okay, the thunk will not be able to change the state directly, but it can call a an action. So it will have actions and it will have payload. And that's it. Okay, now it's working. Okay, let's just hide that. And um, let me think a bit. So in update data thunk, we want to change the course and the name. So we are going to do it that way. We're going to create another action called set course. This is of course an example that will probably not be used in, um, in um, production. But for the sake of our tutorial, I think it's a good example to show set course and it will be set name, not name course and payload. And we just need to add that to the action set course. Easy peasy, right? So we have the store, everything that is like 
data that we store, we have the actions, thunks, they can be asynchronous, but they can also be synchronous. So if you want a sync, we just put a sync. Or if we want synchronous, it, it will be synchronous. Um, it doesn't really matter for now. For now, it will be synchronous. But uh, later on, we're going to s see an example with, um, with an API call. So when we will have to use await, a sync and stuff like that. So for now, I just want to change the set name and set course in one go. And we know that the payload will accept two parameters, so name and, and course. And I can just do something like set actions, set name, and do payload.name, and action set course, payload.course, right. So that's a func for us. A func can call other actions, and actions can mutate the store. Okay, we save it, we go back to the app.tsx, and now we see that we will be able to have update data thunk. And this is what I am talking about. If you name your thunk like a normal action, yeah, it can be messy, especially if you have like 20 or 30 uh, actions and, and the thunks and everything is kind of confused, right? Uh, you need to go every time at the model, check how you name the func, how you name the action. I like that um, standard because it immediately tells you what this function is about, what it does. So func, update data func, and instead of having something like, okay, so we need to create another input for the course, <clears throat> course, input course. It's important to be uh, consistent. So if we named it input name, we should probably name it input course. Set input course. And uh, another input. We're going to put it in a div so it goes on the line. And this will be change course name. And the value is input course put course and the <clears throat> on change event we'll call set input course here we go so we have change name change course name and a submit button in the submit button we should not call set name we should get rid of that and we don't need set name actually we don't need to expose that, but we can call update data func. So the update, the func, remember it, it expects a, an interface with name and course. So we should provide that name, input name, and course, input course. And I think that will work now. So let's change it to I don't know, John, and um, the course is how to kill a Terminator, John Connor. So now you know that I'm a fan of Terminator. <laughs> okay, so I submit and everything is changed. We can check the state. So we can see that we have called the thunk, the thunk has called the two actions and we have updated the state. In the next tutorial, we are going to see more about the thunks, especially their async capabilities and a very, very, very nice feature of them, the possibility to kind of reference to other stores. So for instance, here we have a thunk and we have one store for now, but let's imagine you have another store and I can call that app store. I can, I can have another store called setting store and the thunks can actually call between the stores. So if I have a thunk inside the, let's say it's the app store, it can call the store of settings or something else and get data from there and pass it to this store. So it's really, really cool. I think it really simplifies um, how you organize your app because otherwise you need to kind of put everything in one file. And believe me, if you have a even small application, you will have a lot of a lot of lines of codes and it will become unreadable. Also, one thing that I love to do is just put some comments 
separate the to separate the um, yeah basically the um, the parts. So I will put something like um, actions and then thunks. And here we go. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial.